was just me. I muted it manually, but I guess it was just me. I got my OnlyFans light on. Woo woo. Wait for some homies to roll up in here and then. Yeah. Start this. Tell me, how do I take this uh, full screen? Have you ever done a, like a PowerPoint presentation in Discord? No. Oh, good. What do you want to do, though? Uh, oh, that. There you go. There we go. Okay, well, I will do that when the time comes. Okay. Wait, like, uh, I don't know, just a few minutes. Yeah, for sure. Let's see how many people roll up in. Sozi, how you I'm... been, my friend? I think it's uh, been a couple since I've seen you. We've got some a couple new faces here tonight, too. Very cool. Hey, we've got matching glasses, I see. <laughs> Nerds. Nerds. We can wait a couple minutes. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, I'll let you call it, but like 8.05, usually I start by. Yeah. Yeah, let's wait a few minutes. I um, I probably have, I don't know, maybe about 20 minutes of PowerPoint. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. then, you know, really just wanted to turn this into a conversation, I think, maybe dispel some, some concerns that people have about, you know, like the OSINT just general O's and stuff on externals and all that. Doing well, Sozy. I think everybody else is doing well too. Maybe. Good. Please come get that PJOR. <clears throat> we've still got plenty of, uh, I mean, people are taking it quickly, but we've still got plenty of spots for the, um, the giveaway. If you get the PJOR, I'll shave my beard. Whoa. Whoa. My, my fingers were crossed. Okay, great. Okay, don't do that. Yeah, I'll Hero was. Baby. I don't know if I want to see you uh, without a beard again. You, know, you cut it. You you did it once. Yeah, but not fully. If you so, I left a little beard. If I shaved completely, I look like a twelve year old. You could say I'm aging well then, except for the gray hairs. But Yeah, I've got a head full of gray hairs. I just cut most of them off. Scholar, if um, I'm pronouncing your name correctly, congrats on the PJPT. Yeah, congrats well, on that. Yeah, I'm hoping tonight will be decently conversational. Um definitely will answer what I can about the PNPT cannot answer a lot. Um, but I, but I'll show everyone kind of my methodology. I literally just did OSINT for an external this morning, um, and already got successful creds got there's MFA in the way. So I've got to figure something out there, but, um, hopefully y'all can take some of my learning on the fly. What do we got? 705 beef? Yeah. All right. 805 if you live in real America, but 705 is fine too. Yeah, Texas is just <laughs> Texas America. All right, never mind. Now you're probably way more American. Than... Okay, cool. Let me let me get this thing up. Um, all, right. all right. Well, hey. Hey, everyone. I'm Ange. Um, I currently work for TCM Security. I'm a junior offensive um, security engineer there. Uh, and I have a really unique um, sort of entryway into cybersecurity. I did well over 10, 12, 15 years in customer service. And I went back to school and decided to go in a, you know, the cybersecurity route, did digital forensics for four years uh, in incident response. Um, and through that, you know, I, I actually knew about six months in that DFIR was not where I wanted to end up. Um, and so I started studying probably about four years ago to do red teaming. Um, 
and then just through a series of really fortunate events found myself at TCM uh, and just landed in the offensive security role uh, first of this year. So um, I'm going to go into a disclaimer and I'm not going to read this. I know you're not going to read this. Chat GPT made this for us. Um, but essentially, you know, everything that we're doing here is, um, you know, it's it's kind of crucial to understand that OSINT is uh, needs to be done for good. Um, I'm not here to teach you all how to do bad OSINT or do OSINT that is, you know, um, going to hurt somebody. Um, I'm not here to teach you how to hack into your, you know, ex's Instagram account or be weird and, you know, uh, stalkery. So please don't use OSINT for that. Um, and so, uh, by participating in the session, you all acknowledge and agreed that the organizers and instructors were not liable for any of your decision making. Um, so with that being said, um, I go by Ange, also by Dirtbag or Dirt or Dirtball, if you're on the TCM security server. I've got my LinkedIn up and, um, my GitHub page. I'm, I'm trying to ever grow some, some skills out on GitHub. Um, and so I'll, I'll show you all that a little bit later. Um, but you'll probably see here and there a rainbow kraken uh, hanging out around or a rainbow jellyfish or, you know, some type of cephalopod. Um, and that's what I've chosen as my handle, also tattooed on me. So, you know, if you ever see me in person, you can definitely check out my tattoos. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what OSINT is. OSINT is open source intelligence. Uh, it's collected from typically a myriad of sources. Um, with the intent to provide intelligence to something that you're working on. It is not espionage, it's not hacking, and it's not accessing classified information. So that's just from the top. Um, try to separate in your mind. OSINT is, is things that you can find easily or maybe a little bit more difficultly depending on what you're doing with your OSINT. Um, I know Michal is in the uh, room with us and and what he does in his OSINT is leaps and bounds past what we're going to be doing here. Um, but you can stretch into dark web OSINT and sort of the threat intel space. Um, so no, remember just this is not hacking anybody. Um, we do need to talk about the intelligence lifecycle because when you're doing an external pen test, this lifecycle is really, really important. So first and foremost, your planning and your direction. Um, what that typically looks like for me is that sometimes on Friday, the Friday before, um, sometimes if I get a little bit lazy, it's on Saturday or Sunday, um, I start to plan out what I, I need um, for the, the OSINT in these externals. Um, and so for me in my head, you know, if we're just doing an external uh, and it's not an internal, it's not social engineering, it's not a web app, uh, and I don't need to provide any enriched OSINT for a, a larger scale um, pen test. I know that I'm just sort of really looking for some really critical things. Email addresses. Um, I'm looking to see if I can find any evidence of passwords um, from from data dumps, right? Uh, and I'm I'm looking for some really specific things. And then we move into collection. Um, and I'll show you all some collection techniques that I've got in, in just a little bit. Um, again, this is an external focused mindset, and so we are really trying to to cater our collection to how do we get in so that we can escalate up, right? After we have done the collection, you need to process the data that you've collected. There's a lot of little ways to do this. For me, I'm, I'm in forensics and in external pen testing. Um, I'm heavy on Excel, so weirdly enough, a lot of my processing just goes straight through Excel. Um, I've spent a lot of time learning how to manipulate Excel to make it do what I want it to do. Um, so that's a, a great little um, kind of like a side tip that I've got for everybody uh, is, is figure out how you're going to process things. Get really, really good at a tool that's going to help you process information. And then analysis and production. Um, this is where we really take and fine tune the the data itself. Uh, so really simply in some of these really small external pen tests, that is no more than just cleaning up the data that's collected. Uh, so sometimes our clients want, like they'll want my list of email addresses that I generate, or they'll want, you know, any of the web portals that we came across, or they'll want these, you know, tiny pieces of information. And those collections of data need to go into buckets. 
And so um, that's that's really what analysis and production is for an external pen test. Uh, and I, I I appreciate that this intelligence life cycle, when you're actually doing an OSINT investigation or you're you're doing something that's a lot bigger, more wide scale, a red team event, this is going to look a lot different. But for something that's singular and maybe just a week long, this OSINT has to be really, really quick, right? And so um, my analysis is not much more than just deduping some email addresses and ensuring that I've got, you know, the things that I've scraped kind of clean and clear to understand. Um, dissemination and uh, integration, where are you putting your information at? How are you utilizing what you've just collected? Uh, dissemination here can also include um, what you're giving to the, the client. So if you're here trying to figure out what you're doing for the PNPT, Dissemination here is what you're providing in the report. Uh, and, and like it, maybe TCM is famous for, we want to see your steps, your methodical steps, and we need all of the steps in order to pass you for the PNPT. And so one of the things, you know, that you'll, you'll want to do is really kind of clearly show your OSINT. Um, so I'm going to pause there, and I'm actually going to do this here and there. I'm going to pause for questions. Does anyone have any questions? We have gone over just who I am, a little disclaimer, what OSINT is, and the intelligence life cycle. I don't have a question. I just have a comment. Um, you can't use big words like cephalopod on my um, show anymore because <laughs> it's too sophisticated for me. Uh, uh, I will try my best. That's the only one I'll use. I promise. Um, okay, let us move forward then. We'll get into the good stuff. I want to talk about sock puppets a little bit. Um, sock puppets is maybe something that, uh, and Beef knows this, um, I have a lot of sock puppets, uh, all for different reasons, and I just hold hold them for different various reasons. Um, I Okay, so... Oh, I got started in OSINT, and this is something that a couple people know. Not everyone knows. I will give the world a little insight on this. My OSINT started when I started to track romance scammers. Um, and so I was doing business email compromise work. There's a, a handshake between business email compromises and romance scams. Um, my um, uh, sister-in-law had become a victim of a romance scam. She's got autism, and and so she really just couldn't understand the signs that she was seeing. She ended up giving most of her life savings away. Um, and so I started hunting romance scammers. Uh, so I would do attribution for scammers. Um, and, and, you know, there's I kept track of uh, accounts that I got taken down until I got to a thousand. And then after that, I stopped counting. Um, and so what I was really doing was not just finding the the romance scam accounts, actually bringing them back to individuals themselves so that we could track and see who they were uh, connected with um, so that we could more easily identify romance scam accounts. Um, so that's fun fact. That's where some of my OSINT comes from. Some of it comes from a couple of little things. Uh, Beef gave me a little bit of a, um, uh, what is it called? Like a, a nod earlier when, what did you say? You said, I just, I just, I, I turned it into I'm thrifty. I just like to find things. Oh, just being clever. Like OSINT is really just about being clever. Just finding shit, you know, you guys. You can bleep that out if you need to, Beef. Um, okay, uh, no. so let's talk about talk about this. This is raw and unfiltered. Raw and unfiltered. All right. Well, in that case, let's use big or bad words. Okay, so sock puppets. It is just so simple as who, what, when, where, why. Um, who do you need to be? What do you need to get out of your sock puppet? When do you need your sock puppet by? And when also stretches into when you need it active, how long you need it active, um, where, what platforms, and then why. This is the culmination of just literally why you need this sock puppet. Um, for me, I needed long-term sock puppets in the romance scam world because in talking with romance scammers, I would need to kind of, you know, show that I was potentially a real human being. 
Um, but then I was aware at any moment that my information could get out there in, in the scam community. And then I would just, they would just know, right? Um, and so I was ready for that thing to get burned at any point. Um, whereas I had a LinkedIn account for a long time um, and that recently got burned. And I'll show you why. Uh, one of the reasons that it could have gotten burned here in a little bit. Um, but I had that because I, I just had a long-term LinkedIn account and just wanted to have something that looked legitimate that I could utilize, you know, for, for doing um, way back when I was doing Trace Labs stuff. We all know I've stopped doing that uh, since last year. Um, but I just, I needed something that I could use that wasn't going to be associated with my own name. Um, and so who do you need to be? This is going to be everything from you know, do you need to be uh, somebody leg legitimate looking or can you just be like a total trash account? Um, what do you need to get out of it? Obviously, a lot of these times, if you're actually like utilizing the account for a little bit of time, you need to be able to post. You need to be able to, um, you know, interact with people. And so the person needs to look real. Uh, when do you need it active? Sometimes Facebook accounts, they don't set up the right way. Um, Facebook has gotten actually pretty okay um, with identifying new accounts that are fake. And so if you're going to need a Facebook account three, you know, in three weeks, definitely try to set one up. Don't try to set one up the night before, you know, it's like the demo gods, right? So, so don't kind of screw yourself over like that. Um, platform wise, where again, think a lot about where you're going to need a, a sock puppet at. If you're trying to do some research on a, a missing person and they have a Pinterest account, maybe you, you know, you don't need to spend too much time on that. It can just be like a, a you know, an avatar and go. Uh, whereas if you're trying to really kind of uh, get in deep with some type of threat actor group, you're going to need to have some more information behind it. So there's a blog that I wrote. Um, I will send you all this PowerPoint after the fact. Um, the biggest thing that I'm going to tell you all about OSINT in general um, is that, and I, I really almost hesitated to show you all tools at all, um, and this is going to come as a broken record, but do not learn tools when we're talking about OSINT. You are going to want to learn the methodology. You're going to want, you're going to, want to think and, and decide to be clever, right? Um, because these tools, they're just going to stop working on you um, within... <laughs> Heath Adams, Heath updated the uh, OSINT course, and within like two weeks, one of the new tools that we had put up there um, was no longer working, if that tells you anything about OSINT tools. Um, so Sock Puppets, I'm going to pause here and let you all ask any questions you, um, you might have about Sock Puppets. Yes, and I agree, you definitely do want to update your Sock Puppets enough. Of course, again, the, the why is really important here. If you're talking with a threat group, you're going to want to be very careful to not change things up too, too much there. Um, but you, you will want to be active enough that people start to gain trust. So kind of think about it in that way. Um, so any questions about sock puppets? One of the questions that we get on the TCM Discord server is, should I have sock puppets set up ahead of time for my TCM security exam? Yes, you should have sock puppets set up. Don't ask that question. Just set them up. Get them set up. You'll use them for a bunch of different things, right? Um, so yeah, have, have them ready to go. Go do it right now. Not right now. Watch the rest of this. Uh, okay, let's jump back into it. I don't see any questions. You'll Hero, yes, you will need them eventually, however you swing it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about OSINT in an external pen test. And really, in my opinion, the main goal of OSINT in an external pen test is finding that needle in the haystack on how to get in. And so I'm going to go over a couple of things here and then also challenge you all to remember that there's a course behind this conversation going on today. I want to leave a lot of time for questions, so I'm going to show you all just a couple things to think about when we're thinking about an entry point, but absolutely don't forget to take that OSINT course. Um, it's not a requirement to take the PNPT, but it's a heavy suggestion, right? 
So first you're going to want to get a lay of the land. These are not the four only bits of landscape that you're going to want to collect. But when you we're talking about methodology, you know, what, some of the things that we might talk about are finding social media accounts, let's say for executives, right? If your external pen test includes a social engineering engagement, definitely understanding who you're, you're going after and understanding what might get them fished, um, that's really, really important. And so knowing the social media sites of maybe the top executives, very important. As you'll see here in a moment, also just having a good handle on knowing where the social media sites for the company that you're going after, like what those are. Um, and how to utilize those in your OSINT, uh, you know, in your OSINT search. Um, that's really important. You're going to definitely want to go after email. Um, no, no pen test that I've seen hasn't had some type of email component. And really, in actuality, and in fact, you know, email is one of the, the biggest areas of concern for any business, right? Um, it's a 60-year-old technology that is so 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 far from perfect that it hurts um, and it costs billions of dollars worth of problems a year and so uh, you'll want to determine the email provider there's a couple of tools that will do that of course um, you could always lean on a website like viewdns.info um, and look up and try to see if you can get the, the email provider off of that but ultimately there's hundreds of github projects um, that are going to help you with your osint there um, Definitely some a little bit of web crawling. Um, that's a really good way to do some some lay of the land stuff. We're getting into uh, almost not OSINT territory with some web crawling, um, but there's tools, even older tools. I still use Spiderfoot um, that has a very non-invasive uh, web crawl feature that's not hitting the client's website. It's just hitting you know a bunch of Google operators and, and other tools to begin to collect OSINT around. And then absolutely what we're going to say here about port scanning is that I don't think that there's really a directive. Some people argue that port scanning is, it happens so often that it's considered OSINT and it's not a part of a pen test. Me, us at TCM Security, we're not doing port scanning until the statement of work is signed and the, you know, the, the go has started. Um, so we're not doing any type of port scanning until the actual engagement starts. Um, but, you know, I think the, the thing to say there is uh, think about your methodology, think about what is available to you, um, and definitely consider port scanning not as a part of OSINT, um, but definitely as a part of your total package at understanding what your, quote, lay of the land is. So I wanted to mention kind of scanning, scanning, you know, the client's things here. Um, but wanted to caveat that with like this massive, if you're working for a pen test firm, you're probably not doing that until things go. It's probably not considered OSINT. But as you're thinking about it, think about how you're utilizing the OSINT that you're finding to give yourself richer information to the next step. Um, the next one, we'll go ahead and go to employee email, which is a big one. So this morning, um, I started an external pen test used used my tools to get about two thirds. You'll see a, a two thirds rule uh, down here, which is my own rule that I made up. So please don't mention that other places because no one will know what you're talking about. Um, but I, I kind of got to two thirds of what I thought that their list would be and started going at that point. I uh, started doing password spraying, which is not OSINT. Um, but my OSINT got me to about two thirds of their employees. And by early this afternoon, I had successful creds. Um, and so what I really did here, first and foremost, I identified what the naming convention was. Um, you're going to want to spend the least amount of time on OSINT that you possibly can. So identifying the naming convention, which is the at something.com, at tcm-sec.com, um, that's, that's the first part of it. Uh, you're going to want to figure that out quickly. The second part is what they're actually using for the email itself. So the external pen test that I did this morning, first initial, last name, super easy to determine. You want to know how I did that? I went to our project management tool and I checked who had signed the statement of work. Um, and so with that, you know, we can confirm that that's 
potentially all they're doing. Um, and then we're going to lean on some more OSINT collection and analysis to ensure that that's the only naming convention that they've got. So after we are able to do the naming convention, you identify employees and known accounts. This looks like a bunch of different steps. Um, it can be Google dorking. We're over here on the right-hand side. Um, that can start with Google dorking. You could utilize something like hunter.io or Rocket Reach or ZoomInfo, any of the data broker sites that provide information. Um, the reason I include these in here, it's they're typically paid services, um, but also typically you can get a couple of emails out of these at no cost. Um, a big one uh, that I use in every single engagement is phonebook.cz. Um, that's honestly one of the, the best free resources that I've, I've found. And then down here, automated tools, um, you know, we can identify a ton of known accounts just from letting some type of automated tool go and find these things. And so um, after that, we generate our list and we take it to the intelligence lifecycle. So we've done collection. Um, the processing step for email, what it looks like is we're going to deduplicate. We're going to, you know, make sure that there's not, uh, you know, the same email address in there five or six times, um, and then really do analysis and kind of have this conversation with ourselves about, do we have about two thirds of the company? Um, LinkedIn will tell you how many employees exist at a company. And so I really want to get to that number, at least that number, uh, because what I want is a really good hearty list of emails to spray against. Um, so, so that's one of the huge parts of, um, of OSINT on an external pen test is really identifying email uh, usernames because we know, of course, if we generate a list of email addresses, we can scrape out that domain and then we've got a great username list potentially, right? Um, and so having something to actually utilize to get in is, is a really big step there. So I'm gonna pause here because we've gone over lay of the land and employee email, and I wanna give people an opportunity to ask questions. Um, um, do you have a bunch a of- bit, We had a, oh, you got it, the SIM card one. Um, do you have a bunch of SIM cards ready to go to create your sock puppets? Um, so I hate spending money, uh, but I do have other SIM cards. I'm totally okay with spending the extra money that it takes uh, to get a really good footing, um, especially when I'm doing something like hunting romance scammers. Uh, and, and that's all, you know, username, uh, not username, but social media based. Social media wants a phone number. They know it's a Google, you know, voice number. They don't want that. Um, so I do. But again, it goes back to the why. If you're, you know, taking a, an exam, you know, I don't know. Maybe you don't need a SIM card to create a sock puppet. Maybe you can just use your own account because you're not talking to someone in real life. I don't know, right? Um, Mint Mobile is a great suggestion here uh, because, like, yeah, you can totally, and you can just turn and burn that number. And um, there's burner apps, too, like Beef, like you said. There, there's a bunch of different things. If you're, if you're OSINT, your sock puppet is has like this mission critical thing component to it um so i know people that like are trying to infiltrate ransomware groups right um if you needed a phone number for that for some reason there's no way that i would trust a trust a burner app right i would i would just make my fake human as good as i could right so i would get a sim card and you know i would try to find some way to have a and you know an entire persona created that was as real as possible. Um, I would consider port scanning active recon, not passive like OSINT. Yes. Yes. Again and again and again. Um, so the thing that I really want to say on that slide again is you're considering your methodology for how do I get to point A to point B. Your point B being port scanning and the information pulled from that. How are you putting the two together? Right? So so use that asterisk as not a directive from Ange to go and scan ports and OSINT. Um, I hate spending money. I really do. It's the worst. Any questions about, um, any other questions real quick about 
lay of the land or employee email. I have a demo later, but I think I'm going to, um, to keep everyone engaged and just to show some stuff. Oof. I think I'm going to go ahead and actually do a small demo right now. Okay. So making sure that I don't have anything else up. You don't have my OnlyFans still pulled up, do you? No. Okay. Got finished with that before the stream. Good, good. Okay, cool. So I'm unsure what got my LinkedIn account burned. Um had a had a decent one. Um <laughs> It is I just realized is. my Instagram one got taken away. I had a, a sock huh. on Instagram, and I just realized it got taken down. Yeah, it, Meta's gotten pretty good. Um, I think potentially that this got me in trouble, but I'm I'm unsure. Um, I'm not even going to execute this because I, I save this tool for like panic moments where I'm just not finding email accounts. This is called Weakest Link. Um, and weakest link is a Firefox edition. Um, so it's an extension in Firefox and it's going to tell you exactly how to use this here. Um, but let's, let's say that I, um, you know, am in a crunch and I really need some email accounts really quickly. I've signed into LinkedIn, ta-da. Um, I browse to the required page. And then what you do here is you click on the number of employees. And then just keep following it along. If there's more than a thousand results, you need to kind of break things up and just, you know, use the filters to kind of not. Um, and then when you're ready, you can just put push dump users. And what this does is it puts together this really incredible CSV, um, a first name, last name. And then it creates, I think, six or seven different combinations of email accounts that could exist. Um, in you know putting the first and last name together in different you know ways there are are great python scripts by the way that do this except for this is taking from linkedin um so one of the great reasons to have a lot of connections is because this actually does work really really well um if, you know if i'm a second connection with people um their last name is is available to, available to me a lot and so uh you know making a, a user list is really fast. And then I can use something like Credmaster, depending on the, the email uh, environment that they have to actually enumerate to ensure that these things exist. So that is weakest link. And again, be incredibly careful. Uh, I talked with um, a couple of people here at TCM about this. And they won't even use this tool because the follow count that they've got, it's connected to business pages. They refuse to have their accounts taken down. And apparently LinkedIn will definitely take you down for this. Um, phonebook.cz. Now this is a little bit different. Um, so really easy here. Uh, just put in, you have to actually have a, an, an account through Intelligence X, which is free. Um, and then once you put that in here, you can get a list of, of email accounts straight away, super easy. Um, and you can see that probably three of these exist. This last one probably does not exist, right? Uh, but the, the great thing about phonebook.cz is that it's great for other, you know, OSINT otherwise. So we're talking about doing some web crawling, right? Well, guess what? You know, right here, you can just go through and um, within phonebook.cz, you've actually got a huge list of URLs. So from something like this, you could potentially start to do some reconnaissance on logins and, and various, you know, sites um, that, that might give you some information. Um, you know, emails are great to get into, but they're not always the thing that like gives you the, the, the best information there's vpns that you could send into there's all types of different um web portals uh, i should say that like allow you to get some good stuff so this is a really great website um again this is in the 
this is in the PowerPoint presentation, um, but if you need the short link for this, it's just right here. So it's shared in the chat. Cool. Any questions about either tool? No? All right, man. Let's let's keep going then. Okay. So passwords. Um I will tell you all that what got me into the account or didn't get into the account uh, because of MFA, but the password for the account today, today, was spring 24 exclamation point. I'm not kidding you. Keep it simple. The most common passwords are the most common passwords for a reason. Um, so you've got word lists out there that you can use. Um, when we're thinking about making passwords, you know, or putting together password lists, you could go crazy. You could try some, you know, some crazy things. But in actuality, the most common passwords are really there for a reason. Um, so, you know, what I would say is utilize the tools you've got. Don't overcomplicate things. Um, what I did today, um, you know, aside from using the, the seasons, um, I, they're in a, a state in the North. And so what I did is I looked up, uh, college basketball names because March Madness is going on. Um, uh, the really popular football team up there. So I did use that football team name. Um, you know, I, I tried a couple different other things. And at the end of the day, sp spring 24 exclamation point is what hit. Um, so now I know a couple of different things out of that. Um, but when we're talking about OSINT, specifically what you should be thinking about is what where are these people so you're going to want to do you know your intelligence on where the city's at um jacksonville florida passwords as you're making your list are going to be a lot different than miami passwords uh, when we're talking about sports teams right so if you're going that direction make sure you're using your osint on understanding where you know the lo various locations are right um same thing with um you know sp like re religions you know things like that um another password that we had recently it was religious based um and the reason that we chose to spray with that password is because it was in a really really small small town um out in the mountains uh in like the mid east united states uh just real tucked away and so we chose to do religious passwords because we had done some research and some osint on um where the location of this client was and that's what hit for us actually got into the hr manager's email account which was not a good thing so osint again we're not spraying with OSINT. Um, but we are thinking a little bit about what could be done um, and definitely in generating our password lists, um, what we could do. So again, with this, um, Google dork dorking, definitely when we're talking about OSINT and passwords, data dumps are a big deal. Um, so dark web dumps, things like that. Uh, there's a lot of times you can find passwords in still um in aws buckets and you know in various places where people think they're private um github's gotten a lot better at, at passwords not being in it used to be able to just do like a google dork uh to find passwords in github um that's not so easy anymore but you know sometimes they can still be pretty easy so think a lot again um don't think about your tools so much but think about your methodology you know would this company have scripts sitting in a github you know, page somewhere. Um, if it's a trucking company that's, you know, does trucking and manufacturing, they've never developed a piece of software in their life, probably not, right? But if it's a video game studio, maybe. So think about that as well. Um, be clever, keep it simple. And then um, we actually kind of went, I went 40 minutes into this when I thought that I was going to go about 20. So instead of doing a little bit more demo stuff, let me pause here for some questions.
definitely keep con country um, <laughs> in mind. Uh, we did have a client that was in the UK recently. And so, um, you know, can't be thinking about uh, football, right? But soccer's huge over there. The real football is huge over there. And so you've got to get a little bit, um, you know, you've got to do a little extra research to understand clubs and what might a popular club be. Um, and definitely language as well, right? Uh, we've not ever done a pen test for like a German company or something like that. But I'd imagine that if we ever did, we would de need to be really, really careful with some passwords. Uh, but again, your OSINT would be good with that. Um, so finding ways to to find those data dumps um, and, um, you know, utilizing your tools against them is is really good idea there. Okay, so we've got, we don't have any other questions. Um, so let me take you all through Spiderfoot just briefly. And let me kind of make sure that I've got... Um, things properly set up to go. And if y'all have questions about other things at any point, by all means, um, we can definitely go into that. And again, this is kind of my, from my perspective as a new uh, pen tester, someone that's focused on externals again and again and again. Okay. Can you all see uh, Spiderfoot up? We can. You can? Okay, great. So Spiderfoot is old now. Um, it's depreciated. People are not, you know, they're not keeping it up. The company sold. I still like to use Spiderfoot because it's built into Cali. And to for me on externals, like it, it does exactly what I need it to do. Um, so in this case, I actually just sort of pointed it at TCM Security. Um, so hopefully we're not getting like super pinged on some scans, but they'll be fine. Um, you can see here, we've got some really good information. So, um, you know, there's a bunch of good stuff on, from an external perspective. I'm ignoring things like blacklisted affiliate IP addresses. Um, I don't care about those so much because some of what Spiderfoot does is, you know, it, it, some individuals were using it to track um, threat actor activity. And so for me, this stuff is like, I don't care about that. Um, some of the co-hosted sites, I also do not care about. It also tends to generate a ton of noise. You can see there's, you know, 794 co-hosted sites. That's not anything that, that I care too much about. But we can see here, email addresses. This seems to confirm that that email address that we saw on uh, phonebook.cz actually does exist because it, it did find it somewhere. So that's excellent. And then um, we can definitely kind of keep going, check out, you know, linked URLs. Again, there's some more malicious IP stuff, which I don't care about as an external pen tester. Um, but it will also give me some open, open port information, open banner information. Um, and so this is a really good automated tool to use. The reason that I wanted to show Spiderfoot off is because I really firmly think that you should have some automated stuff at your fingertips. Um, with Spiderfoot, you can, the reason I'm comfortable with a two thirds, um, you know, list of usernames um, is because I can set something like Spiderfoot up first thing in the morning. By the afternoon, I'm spraying. And then hopefully by the evening time, I can actually come into Spiderfoot See if it found anything extra uh, that I actually want to, to utilize. So this is good, but you guys, there's tons of tons of these now. There's tons of platforms that will allow you to put something in and just sort of generate away. The reason that I like Spiderfoot again is because it's free. It's already built into Kali, um, and I have a couple of APIs that I can just plug and play. Uh, but I, I do assume at some point that, like other OSINT tools, this will go away, and I'll have to start using something else. Um, so this is this is Spiderfoot. Do y'all have any questions on on something like automated tooling? Uh, does anyone have any suggestions for automated tooling that they're maybe using? That's a really good question that I I can toss back on you all. I 
I suggest using this. Um, I totally would play around with it. So um, we can do we can do TCM two, and then um, scan target TCM sec dot com. The really cool thing about this is that you can say um, passive scan, right? So this is your this is your OSINT scan right here. So you don't want this. You basically don't want to hit the target whatsoever. You want to do a really really passive scan. Um, and so that's the one that I would suggest to do uh, for OSINT ahead of time. You know, if you're doing something on Friday, Saturday, Sunday before, um, you can run this. If you need to do um, something a little bit more in-depth, footprint is good, or even just do your own uh, by module. Um, so you can come in here and, and choose your APIs that you want, set it up that way, or by uh, required data. So if I was just going after, you know, let's say historic information, um, I could go this route. So we have about 13 minutes to go. Um, there were a couple of things that I didn't get put into the presentation that I did I did want to go into a little bit. And so um, let me stop streaming here and we can kind of go over just some of the things that um, put the presentation back up. So some of the things that I wanted to go into a little bit um, as we talk about uh, lay of the land. So your your web crawl is um, can be automated, uh, but this can also be something that's a little bit manual. Um, what I like to do when I'm really looking for information, uh, I'll turn Burp uh, Professional on, and I'll I'll just start going to their website, clicking things, moving around. Um, if I see something good, especially if I see a login screen um, or, you know, something that looks uh, a little bit like, you know, if parts of the website are old and I see parts of the website that are new, um, one of the things that I really like to do is go back to the uh, go to the Wayback Machine to see what used to be on the old parts of the site that they got updated. Um, and so your web crawl here in Lay of the Land is is a little bit more in depth than just like putting a scanner on and letting it scan or um, what what I really mean by web crawl is have you gone to Google and, and used your search operators um, and one of the dogs is coming in so if you hear like a happy little clicking that's what's going on um, so have you used your search operators um, and there's a website that I love um, to pull from it's just exploit DB Five hundred pages, the Google Hacking Database. Um, so this will give you a ton of different operators to use and play with. So have you gone in here and have you kind of played a little bit to see what you can find? Um, have you, you know, utilized um, some of the tools you've got at at your fingertips, like um, like Burp, to find email addresses? And fun fact about Burp, it used to collect all of the email addresses it has stopped doing that, at least in my updated version. It will only give me about 15 email addresses, so I can no longer trust Burp to generate a username list, as it were. Um, but really, have you kind of just played with it long enough to like, you know, figure out what you're, what you're looking at in terms of an external pen test? Remember, your external pen test, what you're trying to do is find some way in. So that can be that can be doing scanning and finding some type of vulnerable, you know, something or another on a port. Um, but me to you all, when I get in, it's typically through a login portal. It's through email. It's through something like that. Um, so with with that being said, I think we've got about 10 minutes left. Beef, you got anything for me? I don't think so. I think you covered everything. Okay. Unless any of the, our audience oh, has any questions. Now would be the time. The OSINT course itself is going to take you into things like note keeping, um, which I wanted to go into, but me to you all, um, your your OSINT note keeping doesn't change too much from your general note keeping. Um, so, but remember to keep really, really organized. That That is important. Um, the OSINT course also goes into things like uh, reverse image searching. Um, it goes into to people OSINT, social media OSINT, 
Um, and those things absolutely can be used on externals, but this is my kind of my experience of what I've seen. So from the OSINT course, what I'm using the most, and I'm kind of referring to it on the side here, um, sock puppets, because because I need to have sock puppets set up for externals, um, search engine OSINT, uh, email OSINT, password OSINT, and then um, website OSINT, business OSINT. So uh, remember that the OSINT fundamentals is this really great traditional fundamentals course. Really, again, try to apply that methodology to I'm taking OSINT and I'm using it to get into a company. And so the things there uh, that you can do to practice, you can do what I'm doing today, right? So you can go um, and you can just find some company on LinkedIn and just put together a list of usernames that you think might exist there. Um, you know, do a little bit of research on people and, and see if maybe you can pretend that you're going to do a social engineering engagement on them and collect some information on the C-suite. Uh, so, so kind of, you know, challenge yourself. I, we get a lot of questions on the TCM server as to like, you know, what would you do to practice the OSINT side? What would you do? Are there any boxes or in their boxes? No, just, just use the real world stuff and just kind of set yourself up for like a creative dive for a couple hours. How similar is the exam to the challenges in the course? Um, Heath just updated the challenges in the course. Um, I would need, I'm so sorry, I would need to go look and see what those are. Um, but I can come back and answer that question for you. When did he update them? I think he updated them when we did the course update right before the PJOR. I don't remember them being too much different because I ran through the course again before that and yeah. I don't remember them being too much different. I know at least a couple of them were the same. If I was taking the PNPT all over again, what I would do is I would take each one of these subsections um, and I would just practice at it a couple times. Um, so sock puppets, I'd, you would know, I'd make a couple of those, uh, even for the hard, the harder um, social media sites. Reverse it, image OSINT, I would totally, absolutely um find some images and that look like they're you know from weird parts of the world and and do that or, or do a couple of the OSINT ctfs and, um beef i know you've shared those here in the weeks past um i actually really found cool a few others that i've been sharing with people who were asking for help so i can share those too oh yeah 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 share those here um and in the server in the tcm discord server in the OSINT section i have a couple of challenge questions there that um frankly, that I shared that I wanted to feel similar to the PJOR, uh, but you could definitely practice at those two and just kind of, you know, get those, those juices going. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would take each one of these sections and just, just do them. Um, because we didn't do anything on the PNPT. We didn't do anything that's not taught in this course. Straight up. Yeah, we will. Um, so Trusty Ape said something in here about uh, note keeping is very important. Um, we will fail reports if they're not good enough, uh, professional enough. So um, the strong encouragement that I have there is to just continue practicing at your report writing skills. And I think, Beef, you're going to be doing a... Uh, you're going to be doing... Are you still doing like a report writing... Report writing, report writing is going to be the last in the series, so okay. three weeks from now. Yeah. And if yeah. He, if he's still in the audience, our our guest is going to be here. He is still in the audience. Reshk is going to be doing. Oh, nice. Yeah. Reporting. I'll knock that out of the park. Um, my preferred note taking app is. Um, don't laugh at me. It's just a uh, one note. <laughs> I just one note for life. So it's so simple. Um, and I, and I, I totally get that. Like people like note taking apps that like do all these connective things and you can do all this fancy stuff and like me to y'all, like I, maybe it's just the way that I memorize stuff. Like I don't need it. I just need to put my information down somewhere. Um, I converted back. I'm sorry. I found a, a code block add on for OneNote, and I went back to one note. <laughs> I do still have an obsidian notebook if I decide to go back to it. 
yeah my um i decided to do like my public blog <laughs> on git book so that was really hard um and actually i ended up putting it down in such a dramatic way because i just got so fed up with dealing with git book um but if you all wanted to see that it's here i kind of treat that as like my I don't know. Weird CV. We'll see if I keep going on it. Any other OSINT ex for external questions? Did you go up, bro. Or does anyone have any fears? Is there anything that like maybe they've like heard about the OSINT section that they want answered or you know, I, again, I can't share too much. Um, so how do you handle when they change their schema? Um, meaning like first name at or first dot last, those things. Um, hopefully they are using something like the Microsoft 365, uh, which most people in the world are. And so uh, I use when we're past OSINT, right? Um, I just make a huge list. So I, I essentially will lean on Excel and I'll make a list that's, you know, first name at and one that's first dot last initial. I'll make this massive list and then I'll use uh, Credmaster, uh, which leans on AWS to like utilize different IP addresses. Um, and I'll use the O365 uh, enumeration module and then just check a giant list of things. Um, and so I, I actually, that works so well that um, that's why I made derp, which is, let me find the GitHub link. Um, so because I did a lot of cloud and forensic investigations, um, I had ended up collecting service accounts, um, meaning, you know, uh, accounts receivable at domain name.com or help desk or service desk or whatever. Right. Um, and so I ended up putting them all together in this um, repository project that I, I'm going to continue to update. And so what I typically do is I just take this one at the top that I called the big ass list. And I add that in when I'm doing enumeration. And today uh, it, like I found 20 extra accounts that exist um, just because I took this list and, utilized it as well in my enumeration. Um, so so that's great OSINT, right? <laughs> finding repositories and finding tools and finding things like that um, that will help you in your externals. Um, I would include that as this really great opportunity um, for OSINT as well. Um, Michal is, is in the room again. Be super careful with your your OSINT tools. Um, in a, I have a Discord server on the side, and Michal um, commented on one of the things that I uh, um, had shared, and and basically he was like, "Do not do this. This is just giving them more information, and um, don't play, don't even play with this tool." And so, um, just you know, of course, be careful. Uh, I should also say, if you are OSINT nerdy, uh, Michal is like please follow him on LinkedIn and I'll post his LinkedIn here. Um, I've been able to learn just so much from him and uh, he's totally a mentor, um, you know, quiet mentor. Uh, <laughs> Cause I don't, I don't ping him with uh, messages and stuff. Um, but please follow him uh, because he's got some really great stuff. If you're into personal privacy as well, Michelle is totally the person to follow. Gresh, did that answer your question? I hope that I finished my whole thought there. But basically, I just spray the whole thing. Cool. If they have Okta in place, or if they have something like that in place, um, and you can't verify the usernames, and again, we're past OSINT here, of course, but um, I would just continue to try to spray all of them, even if they potentially don't exist. More time. It's more of a time suck. Big ass list. Mm-hmm. 
but seriously, the first day that I like actually get into an account using that list, I'm going to be very excited. It will be a LinkedIn post. Okay, well, it's 9.01. I hope that this helped everybody out. If I can say one more thing again. Okay, so two things. Um, one, do not use the tools. Don't learn the tools. Learn the methodology. Um, and then, and then two, when you're taking the OSINT course and you're studying for the PNPT, really think about that methodology because you're learning the methodology to do the OSINT steps. But in the case of the PNPT, you're definitely leaning on your OSINT skills to get in to an environment. And so you'll want to understand here in the entire OSINT course, what what we're teaching here that will get you in. So that's kind of the most that I can say about the PNPT. Good luck. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I might not be able to share anything. Um, but yeah, and trusty ape, I think the the last thing that I would say is don't stop enumerating. Um, if you're still looking for a way in, it potentially means that you have not enumerated everything yet. So just keep going. Cool. Before we, we good? Wrap up, I'm going to share the uh, link to the notebook, which I, I have to also rename because it's not just the PEH course, but um, I don't want to make it so people can edit it. I'm going to share the link to that notebook that we're working on that's going to be ready by the end of the study group like hopefully like a little exam guide to make things easier for someone maybe so that notebook right there you can save the link and always view it and it will be edited over the course of the study groups and, and all the guests that have been on the study groups will be contributing to it in some way yeah yeah i'll i'll toss in some knowledge there for sure Thanks everyone for hanging out. If you all, um, I, to plug my own thing, if, if you all um, are going to be doing the PJOR, please tag me. I would love to celebrate at, before you're doing it, during the exam, after the exam, pass or fail. I'm here to celebrate you guys. So um, please hit me up if you're doing that because I would love to know. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>